Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today on the table, uh, kind of, we are going to talk about Star Wars Unlimited. I'm Rob, if I didn't say that already. Uh, hello everyone, hello, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to those who have been around for a while, welcome to those who may be new to the channel. Uh, if you don't know me, I stream here full time, uh, playing board games and things. Okay, I work on the channel full time, I don't stream full time, otherwise I would go crazy. Um, but I uh, stream mainly board games, card games, and whatnot. But uh, the channel got kind of started uh, actually streaming mainly content around lifestyle card games uh, like Game of Thrones, the living card game, Warhammer Conquest, the living card game. I don't know, there was some L5R in there, some Keyforge, uh, a bunch of different stuff that I used to go to tournaments. I'd play in the tournaments, stream the tournaments obsess over the games, uh, spoil preview cards, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then I got away from that, kind of went, um, you know, something kind of happened in the world that stopped me from doing that. Uh, this little this little thing happened. It was like very, very insignificant. Uh, it was called like, I think, uh, COVID-19. Um, and that kind of ruined all the fun I was having going to Keyforge tournaments, uh, filming and covering that kind of stuff. I used to go to weekly events in my uh, neck of the woods at my friendly local game store. Uh, but then, you know, the COVID happens, uh, the before times ended, and uh, then I kind of went hid inside and uh, playing card games inside against yourself or against the same opponent in your wife and or child. Uh, just it gets not interesting after a while. Um, so I'm kind of excited. I was excited when Keyforge, uh, another collectible card game uh, that came out of Fantasy Flight Games, the same company behind Star Wars Unlimited. Um, and yeah, I was excited when I went to crowdfunding, got a new owner and all that stuff, but uh, there's store support, there's no community around me really that's playing it, and uh, I kind of like lost interest really quick because of that. Um, but here we are, we're going to talk today, this is going to be like a casual stream, okay? If you're new here, like I live stream, we're doing this live, uh, non-scripted, um, we're just going to hang out with the people who are here live. If you're watching later, yes, it may not be the shortest, quickest, most informative, condensed video for you. Um, but this is just a live stream that happened. We're going to chat. I can answer your questions about the game. Basically, I am coming at this game as a noob. So if you're here to find the best strat, that's not what this is. Okay, there's other channels maybe for that. Um, but basically, I played this game last year at Gen Con at a Fantasy Flight Games demo. If you were following our live streams during Gen Con 2023, uh, this game kind of like uh, sparked my interest. Uh, very much so. Uh, especially after playing Lorcana for the first time that weekend. And then playing this, I realized how much better this game potentially could be and how this is actually the card game I should be more interested in than one based on a Disney IP that's like more targeted for children. Um, I know this is still a Disney IP, you know, in my mind it's not, but you know, I guess it is now. Um, but yeah, what, one's like, you know, not so targeted at kids, I guess. I guess they both are. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyways, today what I'm going to talk about is my reinvigorated interest in this game. Why I'm excited for it. How you can try this game out for free without getting into it, without buying a single thing. I'm going to show you how to do that today. And this is what helped me know that I was interested in it. Okay. Obviously, I demoed it at Gen Con and was like, okay, this is cool. And then they gave me these promos. Uh, my wife and I, we got these promos for playing. So automatically when you have the promos for the cards, they're sneaky, right? You get the promos, then you're like, oh, I got, I got to get a whole deck that works with it now. Uh, or else, like, these just go to waste, right? Um, no, the real reason I miss playing lifestyle card games, uh, competitive games. I do play the cooperative LCGs and stuff uh, by Fantasy Flight Games. They're like, kind of like collectible card games, but more focused on cooperative play. But there's just something missing there for me that I just love about competitive play. Uh, that really drew me into the hobby. Um, and yeah, this might be my chance to get back into something like that. So I'm kind of excited. Um, so yeah, that's it. So we're going to talk about the game today, kind of go over it. I've linked down below like a how to play video if you guys are curious, like how the game works and, and just want to find that information quickly. I've linked all the other stuff down there too that I'm going to talk about today. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to talk about Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, we'll play a little bit. I'll show you how the game kind of works. We'll play a little bit online. I'll show you how you can try it out yourself against an AI playing it solo. So even if you don't know the rules really well, you can kind of dabble with the game. 
and it helped me realize, okay, maybe I should go to some pre-release events that are happening soon. The game comes out in about a week and a few days. Uh, this weekend there are pre-release events, though I guess that's important for anyone who's interested. I've never been to a pre-release for any of the games I've played, uh, ever. Uh, which is going to be my first time. So I actually, about a month ago, booked like my first pre-release. Um, so I'm going to go to a few different stores in various cities um, around me. I think I'm going to go to three probably. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Um, but I'm excited to actually go to a store and play a card game with people. I, I miss that. Like I used to do it like weekly. I used to travel to tournaments and all this stuff. I used to hang out with communities all around the game, practice games, go to people's houses after hours and like after work and practice for weekend tournaments and stuff. Uh, I just missed that sh social aspect of it. Um, so I'm looking to maybe get that started again um, this weekend. So that's what I'm doing. Raphael says, signed up for two pre-releases this weekend. Two? <laughs> I got three, bro. Maybe four. No, I'm just joking. More than one? Uh, start questioning life decisions, uh, like me. Um, but yeah. So that's what I did this weekend. I pre-booked them before I got a little sick. Anyone who knows me, uh, this is not my normal voice. A little nasally. I'm coming off of a cold. Uh, yeah, I'll probably be wearing a mask this weekend to try not to spread it if I'm still feeling kind of eh, but... Um... Assuming I'm up for it. I should be good. I'm feeling a little better today. We'll see. But my voice is still missing from coughing and stuff. So, um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, basically that's what we're going to do today. I'm not, I'm not going to be doing, okay, here's the other thing, Edward. Uh, yeah, like I said, in the past, I used to stream tournaments. I go to like national events and stuff, worlds. I go to worlds, uh, for various card games, um, world championships and record them. And I'd like voice them over later um, and kind of share them with people, kind of get some featured games on the channel. I'm not going to approach this game the same way, I don't think. I don't have the time, the bandwidth, the resources or anything like that anymore for that. Um, I'm going to approach this game for now as a casual noob. And I'm going to talk about the casual versus the competitive side of the game and kind of some of the cool stuff Fancy Play Games is doing to appeal to the casual fan, which might interest some of you. Um, but I'm not going like, I don't think I'm going crazy and spending a ton of money on it. It is a collectible card game, so beware. The rabbit hole can be very deep. You can fall in and maybe never find your way back out. So I warn you now. Um, uh, but again, this is just going to be informational to explain what I'm doing with it, what it is, and show you how to get into it. Um, so yeah, again, if you have any questions, let me know as I go through this. I'm um, just winging it. So yeah, here we go. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh yeah, one thing I should mention, um, cause this is like standard, right? When you're, you're coming into a lifestyle game, there's going to be people there who are kind of a-holes who are like, yeah, this is my game and I win championships and I'm the boss and I'm so competitive and you guys are noobs and get out of my game and stuff. Uh, no gatekeeping here. I, I'm all, you know, the game needs to expand and have new players get in it or else it will die. Uh, so if you're a noob, don't feel embarrassed. Uh, ask questions, even if you think they're dumb. Uh, but I do have... I did get kind of competitive uh, with some games in the past. So these are what I could find. I have a whole box of trophies for store championships and stuff over the years. Um, but this is my regional trophy uh, for Game of Thrones, the card game. I actually, uh, I live in Canada, but this is the regional trophy for Pennsylvania uh, in, in, in the United States. So yes, I went down there and I conquered your lands. Deal with it. Uh, that was from 2016, way back in the day. Uh, in the before times, and then the next year, I uh, actually was the Canadian national champion uh, for Game of Thrones, the card game, second edition. So there's there's some of my credentials. So I'm not saying I'm good at this game or good at any game, but I, I know what it takes, and I know what's involved with getting serious into a card game and not getting so serious into a card game like Flesh and Blood. I played that and never bought anything beyond starter decks that my store built for me or pre-packaged starter decks. I never bought anything beyond those and still had fun with that game, playing a little casually at home. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've gone from both sides of these like kind of collectible endless games. Keyforge probably spent thousands of dollars on decks, played in tournaments, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I know, I know what it's like to spend a ton of money on these kind of games and I know what it's like to kind of not. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> there you go. For the North, yes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, I've been to Worlds a few times for some of these games too, like L5R, I played in like the first World Championships, uh, Game of Thrones, first edition, second edition, played at a few of the World Championships, Warhammer Conquest, went all the way to Minnesota to play for those, you know, at Fantasy Play Games headquarters and stuff like that. 
Uh, good times, good times. Played a Gen Con a bunch of times, Origins, all these kind of things. So there's my credentials, but like, who cares, really? Um, I'm, I'm definitely approaching this very differently, at least at the beginning here. Just casual, just casual. I'm going to show you how you can try it casually. Okay, let's get to it. I think I've wasted enough time letting people show up. Uh, we've got a nice bunch of people here. Thanks to all 16 of you who have clicked the like button already. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, as I usually do when we're playing a new game on the channel, uh, we usually play like board games, card games, and stuff like I said. Uh, we kind of check out how, it, how it's doing on BoardGameGeek.com. This is not a board game, and typically collectible card games don't do very well on this website. Board gamers seem to kind of downvote them and stuff. Um, but this is the game, if you're looking for it. The first set is called Spark of Rebell Rebellion. Uh, they already have started work on like set nine, and they're coming out with three sets a year. So literally, they pretty much have uh, three years. They said they have five years planned out, but they're already working on like end of year three content. So if you're worried that they're going to be behind on production and stuff, uh, rumor is they already have the first few sets printed and warehoused ready to go so that there's no shortage of content uh, or it's not content. Yeah, I guess content for people to, uh, you know, uh, collect the game and find cards to play and do draft and sealed events and stuff like that. Um, versus some other games that come out, <laughs> Lorcana, <laughs> where like you can't even find people playing because nobody can buy the cards, um, which kind of sucks. Kind of burns the hype of the game, right? Uh, so the designer on this is credited as Daniel Schaefer. Uh, so I know Danny. Uh, Danny uh, worked on Game of Thrones, a card game, second edition. Like I said, uh, this is like the game for me. This is like my favorite. I think Keyforge is probably like my top game, but Danny also worked on Keyforge. Um, so Dan Danny's worked on Game of Thrones 2nd Edition, probably other card games at Fantasy Flight, um, but also worked on um, Keyforge, and now is like lead designer or whatever on Star Wars Unlimited. So already there, uh, just because of my past obsessions, uh, I was already interested when I, when I saw Danny was involved, because uh, I, I like Danny's work. Um, so yeah, uh, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, I know... There's Star Wars fans. I see this online. People are like, I don't know if I should look at this game. I used to play Destiny and Fantasy Flight Games screwed me. Or I used to play Netrunner and Fantasy Flight Games screwed me. Um, all I can say about those things, I'm a Star Wars fan. I wouldn't say I'm like an obsessive fan. I watch the movies and the shows, but I don't buy the comics and the novels or anything like that. Um, but I know of Star Wars. I enjoy Star Wars. It's not my favorite IP. But I never played Destiny. I was really into some other card games at the time. Um, but I know that had like manufacturing issues. They have admitted they screwed up. They're trying to fix that with this game. Also, Netrunner, that was kind of out of their hands. That was like, uh, what was that? Wizards of the Coast pulling that away when they started doing the Rune Wars miniatures game or whatever. Um, so they, they like stole those licenses back or something like that. Or was that like Wizards of the Coast? No, that was the game's workshop thing. Twice FFG, since I've been in this hobby, has lost... IPs because they pissed off, supposedly pissed off, um, the license holders, so Games Workshop one, and then Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast the other, um, because they were like doing something that the publisher didn't like. Like, I think it was like Keyforge, they like showed that off supposedly, and like Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro didn't like what they saw, the way that Keyforge was kind of going after the casual limited market, supposedly. So they pulled the Netrunner IP because basically they were competing with them too much or something like that. I don't know what it was. Those are just rumors that I heard. I don't know how true that stuff is. Um, and then the gear, the Games Workshop thing, like uh, there's a whole bunch of board games FFG was making that were awesome. And then they lost the IPs to them and then they just went out of stock. So it, it hit the board gaming side too, not just the card gaming side. So people think that like Fantasy Flight just screws up only on collectible games, but it's like they kind of screwed up on a bunch of IP related stuff, but that's the that's the game they're in, right? They're into making awesome games, but also having an overlord owning the IP of it that they have to go through approvals and could could like break contracts and stuff at any time, right? Mm -hmm. This is no different. This is Star Wars, right? It's, they're they're working with Disney, although they have Asmodee behind them now and stuff. So Asmodee is a little bigger. Maybe make sure they don't mess things up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but hopefully they'll learn from their mistakes. Um, but either way, I don't care. If this first set, if for the next four months, I have some cards and I'm playing this game where I'm fun and I'm going to weekly events and my local community actually is showing up regularly and playing the game and I can play with different people every week 
and the game dies after first set, I'm okay with that. I'm not collecting crazy expensive cards. I'm just trying to play the game. Uh, so my value will be there probably. Um, I know some people get a little scared about buying cards and trying to sell them in 10 years and worry if the game's going to last and all that. I'm just coming at this from a gameplay perspective, so hopefully that makes sense, uh, the way I kind of look at it and talk about it. Um, but yeah, I know there's like two sides to collectible games. There's people that like to hoard stuff and chase stuff and buy low and sell high and all that. Um, that will be here, I'm sure, but um, but yeah. Anyways... Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I feel I feel a little better today. I still have like a throat like from coughing. Like I, I still have like a full voice. It's kind of annoying. But I had some good rest yesterday. Okay. Uh, so the official website I've linked down below kind of explains the game. Very newish player friendly, I feel. So I'm going to use this as like my backdrop to kind of explain what it is. But it is a collectible card game. Okay. If you're familiar with the term Magic the Gathering, or Pokemon, TCG, or any of that stuff. This is one of those games with the you know, packs of crack, the addictive blind bags full of cards. That is here. Okay. It does have a starter set that you can get into the game with. That's this thing right here. That's uh, this thing right here. Two-player starter set. Full decks. Comes out in about a week and a bit. You can pre-order it at your local game store. Uh, this stream is not sponsored, by the way. I'm just a little passionate about it. Uh-huh. But yeah, this product, I pre-ordered this actually from two different stores. Because <laughs> I want one that I can rip apart and use to build decks. And I want one that I keep together for playing the game with people, family and friends. Um, to kind of show them the game, as I usually do um, with a new card game and stuff. I like to keep a little set that I can demo the game with. Um, so I ordered from two different stores on purpose. Kind of support them. Show them that people are interested. Um, but there's a two-player service set coming out in about a week and a bit. And that is... That is one way you can kind of get into the game and try it. But they also sell booster boxes of packs. You can go to stores, buy one-off packs. Um, and that's like it. They're keeping it kind of simple. So on their website here on StarWarsUnlimited.com, uh, there's ways to find out about getting started. You can read the quick rules. The comprehensive rules are there. They talk about product releases. We can kind of look at all this stuff on here. Uh, how to play. Uh, different ways to play. Yeah, let's just click through some of this stuff quick and see. So, uh, they're really focusing on the in-store stuff. Same way Keyforge was designed. Keyforge so could have been a digital game. It could have been a physical and digital so well right from the beginning. If they launched it with like an official app, you could scan the QR codes on your decks for Keyforge and put them in the app. That would have been amazing right from the start. But they didn't do that. They really built Keyforge as a way to get players into stores. That's like, Fantasy Flight Games has been very focused on that from the beginning. All their LCGs were the same way. The whole LCG model for living card games, which were a kind of way to be a different release cycle from a CCG, uh, had monthly releases. And the idea was you would go to your local game store monthly and pick up a new product and it would get you in the store and seeing other board games and seeing other players and building community. This game is the same. They're trying to do this game uh, three sets a year. They're going to have weekly play support and all this, assuming your store supports it. And if you want them to, go ask your store owner. Tell them you're interested. That's the only way it's going to happen. Um, but uh, they're trying to get you into the store and playing again. Okay? It's that type of game. This is not an online game. This is not like play it in an app. This is not like Hearthstone or Hearthstone or whatever that's called. Um, or those online ones, at least not now. It's like physical cards. This is like, this screams like 90s. TCG, this this game. Like anyone who dabbled in collectible card games back in like the 90s and 2000s, that's what this game feels like and, and seems like. It's kind of how they're approaching it. Um, so they want you to connect. Okay? Whether you're casual, competitive, they want you to connect with other players, connect with your local game store. If you have one, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, collect. Okay? The whole bunch, if you're crazy and you just want to collect cards, you're not crazy, but you know what I mean. Uh, I think you're crazy if you're trying to collect every type of card in this game, and I'll show you later what that means. Uh, it's a little scary. Uh, if you're a completionist, turn off the stream right now and run away. Uh, you've been warned. Um, and then compete. Whether it's casual or, or competitive, uh, they're going to have different ways of doing that. Um, and then, like I said, the how to play. Where's this link? 
how to play. So they have a little web thing here to kind of show it. I'll show you a little bit of play in a bit. Um, but yeah, you're basically going to pick a leader. They're, they're characters from the Star Wars universe. Like the starter set has like Luke and Vader in it. So if you're familiar with the original trilogy, the Rogue One movies, supposedly there's stuff from the Rebels uh, cartoon. I never watched that. Um, but there's stuff pulled from like comics, video games, movies, books, all that stuff. They're calling it unlimited, I think, because they're like allowed to use the whole Star Wars like universe IP. So you're going to see stuff even in the first set, kind of hinting at future um, eras and locations and stuff in Star Wars, um, which is interesting. Um, but you pick a leader, you pick a base, and your base is like your main life. So in it's kind of like one of those games where like you could attack the player has like a main health. That's your base. And they're usually like 30 health. Or you can fight with units. So you have units in space, you have units on the ground, and those units can fight each other, or they can fight the base. So it's one of those games where like, you have to decide when is a good time to deal with the board, or to deal with the end game like player health, basically. That's like the best way I can explain that, I guess. Um, so you have a deck of cards, surprise. So it's random drawing from a deck. Two things that I love about this game, and what make me kind of run from other games, uh, and you guys have heard me complain about this on the channel before in board games and card games and stuff. They did a couple things here which are kind of cool. So resources, so the cards are not really multi-use, but the resource thing is kind of like Lorcana. Um, you can put any card down as a resource face down and it's kind of there for the rest of the game. And you can exhaust that to pay for other cards you play. So as if you see cards and kind of, you get, to, you get this fun player decision every time you draw whether you want to kind of what cards to put in resources to lose for the rest of the game. And I found that very fun in Lorcana, and it solves the problem of like we had in Game of Thrones, like, or I know in Magic, I've never played Magic, I know, I know, um, but of like mana or lands or whatever. Um, and in Game of Thrones, it was like locations, right? You need certain locations to be able to play certain types of cards. So it was very dependent on how many were in your deck. If you drew them or you didn't, uh, you could get screwed, right? In this game, it like take any card in your hand, you can put it down as a resource. You slowly put down one resource a turn. But that's not the best part. The best part, it doesn't have the, the crappy like draw one card around, even though it kind of is because you should be kind of resourcing a card. You draw two cards around and you get this nice decision point of like, do you keep both cards? Do you resource one? You know, uh, and which one do you resource? And then when do you stop resourcing? And then every round after that, you're drawing two cards. And you have two, let's so say you're getting more in a hand. It's not as good as like my favorite way, like Marvel Champions, you know, where like you uh, basically play as much as you can and then you draw back up to a hand size. That's my favorite way to play. But this game has the whole, um, if you run out of your deck, you don't instant lose, but every card you need to draw after that will do three damage to your base. So you're basically like playing on a clock, uh, if that makes sense. And you can make your deck as big as you want. There's no minimum, or there's a minimum, but not a max. So if you're worried about getting decked, um, you can get around that. Um, so there's only two phases. This game, they, they, like, they even said they're going to keep this game super simple and approachable and, accept and accessible for all types of players for the foreseeable future. So they're going to, they've gotten, they've admitted in the past, the first set's pretty basic, brings people in, and then very quickly they start making the game way too complex by throwing in crazy combo cards, a hundred new keywords, the rule book gets super bloated, so many bad interactions, um, restricted lists, blah, blah, blah. So this game that said for the for a while, for a few sets at least, they're going to keep it pretty simple. So people, they, they expect some people are going to look at this game and go, ah, not for me yet. And it's going to take some time to build up communities. It's going to take some time to get people back into stores, being around people, playing, seeing reviews of the game, trying the game out and all that stuff. They've been doing demos for months with this game. Uh, FFG employees and volunteers have been traveling around, like demoing the game at stores and stuff, um, really trying to get people to try it out. And the, the fact they were demoing this at Gen Con, uh, I don't know, when was that? Like eight months ago, seven months ago or something? Um, it's kind of nutty that they already had like finalized stuff to demo it, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, basically you're going to be just fighting your opponent using units, uh, events, and upgrades. So there's like attachments, you know, just like any other game, like it's, I'm telling you, this game is not like reinventing the wheel. It just feels very like simple, approachable, classic, but has some depth to it so far. And you know it's going to get more interesting as it goes, I hope. But not too quickly, right? 
You don't want people who find out about the game in six months to a year to then feel very overwhelmed because the game is like way too complicated. And that's like a mistake that gets made all the time. But if you don't add interesting stuff quick enough, also the hardcore player loses interest and moves on too. So um, there's definitely a fine balance there that they could mess up. Uh, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, attacking. Units attack each other. They have a attack stat and kind of like a health. And things hit each other simultaneously. We've seen that in many board game card games. Nothing new there. They have actions. You can exhaust the card to do actions. Uh, like I said, the simplicity, there's only two phases. There's action phase, and it's got that cool back and forth. So this is not one of those games where you like sit there, and I've played so many of these, where you like, it's your turn. And then you watch somebody sit there for 20 minutes, playing cards, tilting cards, and then finally gets to your turn. So you're kind of like, you know, staring off into a distance, doing nothing, uh, and you can't interact. This game actually has, uh, each player just gets one action. And they keep going back and forth like that till they're both out of actions where they pass consecutively. And you can pass and kind of wait for your opponent uh, to see what they're going to do. But if they pass, the, turn, the round ends if there's two consecutive passes. And then you just go to a regroup phase where you basically like draw cards, decide to resource, and ready everything up. It's like very simple, very quick, very interactive, which I love. I, I love... Like, I loved Game of Thrones, the card game, because it had cards that you could, like, interrupt and, and ruin your opponent's plan, even in the middle of their turn. So you're kind of always forced to pay attention to what they're doing. But some card games, like Keyforge, you would kind of just sit there and wait for your opponent to get their stuff done, you know? Like, oh, you, yeah, you, I, you just need me to discard that card you destroyed? Yep, okay. And you kind of just watch them to make sure they're playing it right, but you would basically be sitting there waiting for your turn, right? Um, this doesn't do that. This is, like... I think Star Wars Destiny did it like this, where it was like back and forth, which is very cool. So Admiral Ozzel here has an action. So on my turn, if it got to my turn, I would exhaust this guy, play an Imperial unit, and then basically your turn. And it's back and forth like that, which is really cool, really quick, and really engaging. Like, it's just the player engagement is there. It's like such a smart decision. Such a simple change, but it's like crazy. Uh, there's an initiative system. So if you decide to take the initiative, that's like you passing for the rest of the round. But it means you get to go first next time. And there are some cards related on you having the initiative. And then the regroup phase, draw. Like, I can explain this game so quickly, it's like so basic. But again, there's a how to play video down in the video description. That's done very well on some other YouTube channel that I found. Uh, very helpful. There's the quick start rules are on this website. Uh, on StarWarsUnlimited.com, which are linked below. You can even read the comprehensive rules if, if you want. But to play in like a pre-release or to play online to try this game, uh, you just need to read the quick start rules, which are very professionally done, very straightforward, not too complicated. Um, it's just like the same little pamphlet that will come in the starter set or in a pre-release box um, explaining what all this stuff is. So you can bring this up even while you're watching the stream and go kind of read this as I'm going through and you get more information on keywords and, and kind of like actions and passing and you know how your leader works. But I'll show you, I'll show you in gameplay um, kind of how this stuff works. Give you at least at least a game, I think, I'll show you. Um, again, I'll show you how you can try this game to see if it's it's trash or it's something you like, you know, um, without spending any money, which I think is important. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> you don't know the power of a TCG on your wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, I've told you, I've played these games like casual and, and been like kind of not you can you can like not dive in as deep if if you have self-control you know and if you're trying to just play casually versus competitive it depends if you're not a collector too that can change things it, it all depends how far you want to go with this but they are targeting this game at like every type of player and collector so there should be something here for you however you want to approach it but yes if you are worried about like you have a problem with like not stop chasing packs and opening packs and sniffing that cardboard crack. Yeah, go run, 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 run. It's it's not for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Locator, Locator, sorry, uh, says, didn't know you were getting into this. Yeah, I try to just not talk about stuff until I kind of decide on it. Um, but I've been excited for this game since I played at Gen Con. But yes, I'm going to three pre-releases, I think, uh, maybe a fourth. But I'm still trying to find out if that fourth will let us go there, even if we have to leave like a round early to get to our next pre-release, but I, I will see. I'm just excited to play cards with people again, so I'm kind of hyped. 
and I want to show the stores locally to me some of them um, that were interested in playing and hopefully they'll have week weekly play because I do miss weekly going playing casually with friends you know one night a week going and playing in person and grabbing a beer playing some cards like I miss that and I, I want that stuff to happen again um, and I know I don't want to do it with another card game I want to do it with like this card game I think so yeah Oh, Transformers CCG had the back and forth as well, said Edward. Oh, okay. I, n I never played that. I don't know that one. But I do like Transformers. So many CCGs, man. Um, so, yeah. So, again, StarWarsUnlimited.com. You can find out tons of information. Uh, there's different ways to play. So, the formats. I love the way there's, like, a limited format in a game called Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, so, already there's false advertising happening here. So, this game's supposed to be unlimited, but... There's literally formats called limited. I feel like I'm being cheated. <laughs> Just kidding. So there's constructed where you like build a deck. You go to tournaments. You go to local tournaments, regional tournaments. They have a championship that's happening next year. Um, and that's called premier play. So that's just like build a 50 plus card deck. Play two players. This game is pretty quick. 20 minutes. But in some of the tournaments, I'm sure they'll do best of three. Um, and that is all described here. Okay, you can even build a deck on this website. You can browse cards. Uh, they have draft play, which I think is so fun. I played draft play in Game of Thrones, the card game, first and second edition. It was okay. It was a little weird doing it in an LCG where I don't need more cards, but I'm playing these drafts and getting extra cards. It, it was weird. I'm more excited to do it. I was super excited and loved it in Keyforge. Keyforge did it the best, where like you could just, you know, uh, you, you just get three decks and you open them and you decide which one you're going to play or you just get a random deck and you play like a sealed event with just this deck you just got five minutes ago and you didn't have to sit there building a deck for an hour. I loved Keyforge Limited Play. It was so great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that again. But the cool part about Keyforge was that deck that you got, you could take that home. That could be like a championship winning deck you could love and play and go to other tournaments with and go to your local store with, have some fun with and, and you know, rank it up and all that. Um, so I'm kind of excited to play a game where if I go to play draft or sealed, I'm actually like getting product like I'm paying to play But I'm also paying for the product and I'm actually gaining something that I can bring home and then use in future play if that makes sense But like in an LCG I go to play draft. I'm just getting extra cards that probably I'm not even going to use and Maybe I'm getting some promo cards or something But it's like not the same. I don't know. There's something about like cracking packs building decks and then going home with those cards and actually putting them into decks and using them i don't know i know there's an addiction there and, and i understand that but it just seems more interesting to me um than old lcg draft uh if that makes sense i just don't think that was like the right way to do it um but yeah they have draft they have field and that's what the pre-releases are this weekend if you're interested in trying this game out uh, you can go play in a sealed um, and sealed is like two player, uh, 120 to 180 minutes. Cause I guess they count deck building in there 30 plus deck size. So it's a smaller deck. And then they even have this like uh multiplayer format where you're playing like, you know, one versus all kind of thing or no, what is it? Uh, free for all, I guess, free for all where 50 plus card decks will eventually be 80 plus cards when a few sets are out and you're only allowed one of each type of card in the deck, uh, three to four players. You can play more, um, but it will take longer. But they have this whole format made and special rules for it. Not too, not too many special rules, but a way you can play um, competitively or casually with this kind of constructed multiplayer format, which is interesting. I do want to try this out. Um, but the fact you only need like one of each card in the deck from an affordability standpoint sounds kind of cool to me. So with those cards I get out of drafts and seals, I get a bunch of one ofs, right? That'd be perfect for building a Twin Suns deck. And playing multiplayer, you know, casually. I think it's kind of fun. Um, so they have that all already right from set one. They already have like limited play ready. They have multiplayer ready. They have premium competitive stuff going. Uh, all that kind of stuff already planned out. Uh, which is kind of cool. What else we got in here? Product releases. So they only have one set announced. Oh, actually, they've announced the next two sets. There's names for them. But they don't want to kind of like talk about cards that aren't out yet. While there's still have other sets that aren't out yet, I guess makes sense. Um, and we've already gone through that. If you're looking for a place to buy cards or where to play, 
They actually have like a store locator on here. I just noticed a lot of stores haven't been entering their events. You might have to check with your local store. So even if you don't find your store in here that they sell cards or they host events, um, what I've learned is store owners, some store owners aren't very tech smart, so they don't understand how to like put their stuff in here and advertise their events and, you know, run a website and grow a player base and handle social media. So um, call your local store, or email them or check their Facebook page or whatever. Um, but you could, um, I don't know. Let's see what happens. New York? I don't know. I, I don't know. I have it so it's blocked the location on here, so it's maybe busted, but. Or is this not like. I have to enter it here. This is a bad example. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. I'm typing in the wrong box, guys. I don't know why. Uh, okay. So let's go pre release New York, New York. Uh, I don't know. Let's use kilometers just because it's the right way to do it. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Search events. So yeah, there you go. New York City, uh, or around New York, holy crap. Um, yeah, you can find pre-release events in here, the times, where to play them. Um, but also, you can find just where to buy stuff. If you're like, man, where can I even buy the starter set or buy booster packs? There you go. So check your local game store. If you're interested in actually playing with people in person, literally like all that stuff happens in like two days. Uh, there's pre-releases already started. Um, but there's some going all the way till like even launch weekend in a week and a bit. Um, but there you go. And then they have a card database on here, which is kind of cool. So if you want to browse through the leaders and stuff on the bases and all the cards, all the cards have been spoiled. People have been playing online for months um, by using these cards in some of the websites and stuff I'm going to show you and playing with each other on tabletop simulator. Uh, but yeah. 250 something cards in the first set. But yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. That me. Okay. All right. Any questions? Let's check with the chat here. Thank you, Tara, for coming in and just hitting the like button. I appreciate it. Um, Kanji, what up? Rob, I love that you're into the TCG life. I can live vicariously through you enjoying it. Glad to see you featuring these on the channel. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got into the hobby through board games, but like, man, once I tried my first like collectible card game, or actually in the 90s, of course, everyone kind of like, I was a kid, you know, teenager and stuff. Of course, like, my brothers who are younger and stuff would, like, collect Pokemon cards. I would collect, like, there was some Marvel card game that I, I would just buy packs with, like, my newspaper route money just to collect the cards. Even though it was, like, a game, uh, I would just collect the cards because they look cool. I just love going to my local card store where I used to, like, buy hockey cards and baseball cards. I then started seeing these gaming cards. And then in high school, there was friends I had that played Magic. I never did, but I, I like, my brothers collected just random cards and stuff. But I never really played a card game, like a collectible card game. I never physically played a game of one properly until like, what was it, like 12 years ago? Um, so yeah, I'm kind of like newish to the stuff too, but um, I like, I felt like I missed out. I wish I could have traveled back in time to like the 90s and my friends trying to get me to come to like, you know, lunch hour magic at my high school. When I was like, come on, man, I'm too cool for that. I wish I kind of just did it. And uh, yeah, my, I would have been in the hobby a lot earlier, which would have been fun. Um, but yeah, nothing against it. Like, I thought it was cool my friends were doing it, but like, I just did was like, I don't have the time for that. It's overwhelming. Like, no, but I wish I did it. I was too busy playing video games and sports and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kristen, it's uh, Twin Suns is like Commander. It, it, yeah, I never played Commander in Magic, but I know of it. And when I was looking at like trying Magic, like when the Lord of the Rings set was coming out, um, I was like, man, they had these like, Commander decks. They're so expensive. But um, I like that idea of Commander, like kind of a more casual way to play. And I, I, I like been to lots of game stores playing like other card games. And I always see those folks playing Commander. And I was like, they'd always be having so much fun. And I'm like, man, if I was to play, that's the format I think I would play. 
But um, yeah, I just don't know if the hyper competitive stuff is for me anymore. Uh, I want to do it, but I just don't know if it's for me. Yeah, Edward is. Yeah, it's like Commander. That's what I hear a lot of people saying. I, again, I can't speak on it. I've never played it. I just know like a high level of what it is, but. <laughs> hey, Yogi. Um, Kristen says, I have to agree with limited play of card games. It's such a fun experience. Cracking packs and deck building is always such a fun puzzle in itself. Yeah. The only problem is me, like mentally, I, I, I like, I get scared because you guys know when I play games and there's like too much randomness involved that's out of my control, I get frustrated, right? So if like the competitive side of me comes out and I'm like, I feel like I have no chance to win because I didn't open the right cards and my opponent opened better cards and they were smart enough to put them in and, and like, you know, and they maybe don't even play as well as me, but they just have the cards. I feel like that sucks, but I hope they've designed it well enough that like the random spread. Yeah, I understand. I know from Keyforge, somebody can open an amazing deck and you open a, a turd deck. I know this. Um, and I still had fun with that. So I'm assuming I'll have fun with this because I'm kind of more open minded about it. But I just worry my competitive side you know, and I'm not a huge fan of deck building. Like, I want to learn more how to do that and become better at it. And this is a good way to do it, I think. So I'm okay if I get my butt kicked a bunch uh, before I figure all that stuff out, which I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of like being a noob at something again. Uh, the sealed play that has been shown off seems like a lot of fun. Uh, you better get some rest, Rob, so you can be ready for all your pre-releases. I know, I know, I know. But I'm okay. I'm going just for fun. I'm okay if I'm not, like, so sharp at it um, and, and all that stuff. So I'm just looking to have some casual fun, just being silly. And, like, Mel's going with me. She's excited. Mel's going to be cracking packs, putting decks together. We've been kind of researching the game, playing it together a little bit. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm excited. I'm excited. Like we used to travel to tournaments all the time with friends and stuff, fill up a couple car loads, drive for like five hours to some tournament and play and stuff, practice in our hotels overnight. It's so so many fun experiences I had in the hobby based around like lifestyle card games. Um, so yeah. All right. So now I, I wasted enough of your time. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can try this game, which I did recently just to make sure that the Gen Con demo wasn't like, you know, they tricked me. To making me think the game's cooler than it is because you know it was in a controlled environment um i wanted to be able to in my home kind of sit back try the game out before i spent money on it and i'll show you how to do that so linked down in the video description i also have put in there something called force table okay force table is a website made by somebody um that you can supposedly play other games on on felt table but this is the way to play the game but just against AI, it's a super simple AI. It kind of sucks. You should be able to beat it nine times out of 10, even if you have a blindfold on. But the idea is this is a great way to try the game. Maybe try a deck out, maybe just experience some cards, maybe test out your understanding of the quick rules before you show up to a weekly game event, before you show up to a pre-release and you just don't want to feel like nervous. And, and that's the way I felt. I've never been to a pre-release. Like, I've been to, like, freaking championship tournaments. Like, I've been there streaming them and playing in them at the same time. I don't know how I did that uh, in my younger years, I guess. But this time, I was like, I haven't been out of my house since before COVID, really, right? I've been out of the scene for a long time. So I was a little nervous, I'll be honest, being fully, fully transparent. So I was like, I would love to go play in a pre-release, but I just assume there's going to be these hardcore card players there just wrecking face and, and I'll feel so dumb and then I'll get competitive and get frustrated. But I was like, you know what? Instead of just buying a starter deck, hiding in my home, playing with my wife, my kids, some family and stuff, uh, I wanted to go to pre-release. But I wasn't convinced until I found out about this website. So on this website, totally free to just play with the starter decks, or decks imported from the Star Wars Unlimited deck-based data builder, whatever, data deck-based builder, whatever. Um, so there's a website. I actually should have showed that first. So there's a website here called SWUDB. So if you've ever played one of these card games, there's always a something something db.com or whatever, uh, where fans have built this website and they share decks on here, discuss decks, trade decks, like decks, Build your own decks, 
but you can import decks into force table um, and try them out too. So if you want to get really crazy with it, but I'm not here to show you this stuff today. I don't care about going that far yet, right? If you just want to try the game, you just go to force table. You don't have to worry about building decks and browsing decks and owning all the cards and none of that stuff, okay? Okay? You go to force table, you go to quick match, okay? If you want to support whoever this is, Patreon, you can do sealed and draft, okay? But if you just want to play a quick match, you click it, you can import decks, okay? That's the part I was talking about. But you can also just play with the starter decks that are coming out in the starter deck in a week or so, right? That you can order from a game store, online, whatever, okay? And I'll show you a little game of it here. I'll just show you, it's super quick. Um, but again, if you have any questions, throw them at me. Again, I'm not trying to do the best way to teach you how to play, how to be the best of the game or anything like that. I'm just showing you like why I'm excited for the game and how you can try it out. Take, don't take my word for it. I'm not telling you you need to buy this game, please. It's not for everybody, like I try to say with every game. But I'm excited, and I'm hoping if you didn't know about it, I'd show you it at least if you'd be interested. And you can also try it out yourself to see if it's for you or not, too. Uh, that's all I'm trying to do. I get nothing out of this. Do whatever you want, okay? I don't care if you, you hate it. It's all good. I don't care. Uh, but I hope the game does well, though, too. So uh, Okay. So there is a way... Oh, reset. Hold on. Reset. It saved my clicking before. Okay. When you come into here, you'll see the official starter decks. Okay. You can actually look at the deck that's there. So if you're like, I want to buy the starter decks. I don't even know what's in them. You can go here and read what's in them before you buy them physically. Okay. And, you, and there are some cards that come in here that you won't find in booster packs. So if you're one of those people that needs to have it all, you need to buy a starter set and some booster packs or some singles or whatever, or play draft or sealed. Okay. Um, so there's a cool thing here, which I kind of glossed over when I was talking about the game. But when I was saying you pick your leader. To build a deck, you pick your leader. So we have Darth Vader. This deck's already pre-built. I don't need to know anything about deck building, but I want to show you something that's really cool also. To help you kind of get started deck building, though, you literally have a leader. And if you see on the right side of the leader card, I have the red icon and a black icon. One of them is villainy, black. Red is... Uh, aggression and this allows me to basically save money on playing cards those are like coupons so I have a red coupon and a black coupon so majority of my deck I want to have cards in them that have a black icon under the cost or a red icon and a black icon under the cost in the top left so this card for example Death, Death Star Stormtrooper cost me one resource to play if I didn't have red or black on my leader or on my base, and you can pick any of the four colors of bases. There's green for command, blue for vigilant, yellow for cunning, and the red is aggression, okay? So you pick a leader that's like heroism, which is white, or villainy, which is black, and they'll always have a second color so far in the first set. I'm sure they'll get crazy with it in future sets. And then you pick a base. And that base allows you to put in another color. You could pick, I could pick a red base, and then I have two red coupons, so I can play cards that have two red icons on them. And in, either way, if I don't have the amount of icons on a card, let's say, let's say this card had two green icons on it instead of a green and a black. I have one green on my base, so I don't have to pay that two cost. I pay the two cost on the card, but I would have to pay two extra for not having two green icons. So basically for every icon that's on a card that you don't have between your leader and base, you have to pay two extra for. So the cool part is you can literally play any card that's in the set in your deck, which is bananas. It's like a deck builder's freaking wet dream, man. You could put in any deck, you, any card you want in the deck. But again, if you don't have the proper aspects, aka the little colored symbols, they cancel each other out one for one. You have to pay two Extra cost on top of the card's cost for every card you put in the deck that doesn't match. You don't have to worry about those starter decks. They've obviously only included cards that match the leader and the base. But again, I could switch up the base to be a blue base. Throw out all the green cards. Start throwing in blue cards. Boom. Whole different deck. Whole different feel. Whole different play style. But I like the way it's more focused. I like that Marvel Champions, you have the aspects. And then you have the leaders or the heroes that come with their own preset of cards. 
it's not as restricted as that, but it reminds me of that. There is some restriction, which I like, but there is some open-endedness that you can go bananas with, which is kind of crazy. So if you want to sneak in a little card in here that your opponent's not expecting, that you can play a little later in the game for a little extra aspect tax, uh, you can do it, which is kind of cool. I just thought it was another really neat thing about the game. Like, they definitely thought this game through quite a bit. So there's a lot here that, like, I find really interesting. And you guys know I love to bitch about the smallest, most insignificant things in a game. But, like, literally not drawing one card a turn, but drawing two. Like, those kind of little things are, like, huge things for me. That are, like, I just love that. And more decisions for the player every round that feel meaningful. I love that. But also simplicity to teach the game and pull in new players. Mm, I love that stuff too, right? They've thought about a lot of that stuff, which is really cool. So anyways, all this long-winded ranting. Um, let's. I'm going to pick the Vader deck because Vader is better than Luke, obviously. That's right. I'm one evil mofo. Uh, then I'll select the uh, player one for the Luke starter. Oh, wait. I did it wrong, I think. Hold on. Yeah, I'm a dummy. I'm player one, I think, right? So I want to be Vader. I'm going to make... I mean, I can do a mirror match, but I'll just select player two. I, th I think player two is the AI. And then I could just be the starting player, or we can do random. Boom. Okay, I know you guys can't really hear that. I forgot to put the sound on for the game. But it's okay. It just makes shuffling noises and stuff. You don't really need to hear them too much. Um, but yeah, so they have all the rules scripted in here. But again, you can only play against the AI. So no embarrassment. You know, I'm playing on the internet like an idiot, so you guys will see all my bad plays and all that. Because, again, I don't know the game that well. I don't know all the cards. I'm so looking forward to cracking packs this weekend and just playing with cards and, and that I've never seen before. I can't wait. Um, but, yeah. Here, uh, you get to choose to take a mulligan. Okay, here's one bad thing about the game I already don't like. All right? I know. I know. I shouldn't be so passionate about mulligan rules in games. But literally, there's a way to do mulligans correctly that we've learned over the years. And there's ways to not do them correctly. This game does not do it correctly. Okay? Trash mulligan rules. I am so disappointed that the people behind this game have already done better mulligan rules in other games they've made. And they chose to do the most crappy mulligan ever. You look at your starting six cards. If you don't like it, you get one mulligan. And you don't set these cards aside. You don't put them on the bottom of the deck. No. You don't keep any of them. No, unfortunately. You literally shuffle them all back in the deck and draw six again. Yes, you could literally draw the same cards again. Yes. Trash, mulligan rules, I don't know. It's so basic. It's so 90s. It's so dated and so dumb. I just wish it was like, keep two cards discard the rest, draw new ones, shuffle the rest back. It's something that made a little more player control, but it's not. It's just the Wild West. So you really have to be like, for sure you want to throw it back. I know some people are going to laugh at me and they're like, who cares, mulligan rules, whatever. But it, to me, like, there's like, I want to see this hobby evolve, and that's like, this is the step back. Even like the most little thing. I don't like it, but anyways. <laughs> I know the drawing two cards makes up for a bit of this, which is why I kept talking about that beginning. But I still wish there was a little bit more here. I wish there was just a little bit more here. But yeah, it still bugs me though. It still bugs me. <laughs> Something I have to mention. <laughs> Again, personal preference though, of course. Uh, so yeah, let's look here. So, oh, another cool thing though. Again, so I've complained about that. But again, here's the cool thing, okay? Most games, any game I play, you start out with limited resources. You build yourself up. You feel like a boss at the end. And you're smashing for big numbers, okay? This game has that. But instead of starting out the game with like one resource or feeling like the game starts out super slow, it does start out slow. But you start out kind of like on turn two because they let you get two resources to start, which allows you to play way more cards in the pool, which I think is so cool. And it opens up for some more first turn, second turn kind of plays that are less boring than most first turn plays in any kind of game we know of, right? Um, you kind of get in the action kind of quick, it feels like, versus some of the card games we play on the channel, cooperative, competitive, board games, whatever, where it's all about just like setting up, like we're playing Earthborn Rangers recently, right? You kind of like set up a little slow, you build yourself up, you get into the game, you know? 
Um, but you don't do that here. So what I'm looking at here, this is an upgrade, for example. Uh, it's two cost for me to play it. It's unique. I can only have one of these in play at a time. Um, and it's like an attachment that goes onto a character or a unit. It adds three to their attack or the blue is their health. Gives them an abil ability when played. If attached unit starts Vader, you may deal four damage to a ground unit. Okay. Here's the unit, for example, the cell block guard. Some of these cards are blurry. I think they like scan them from like spoilers and stuff. So it's like a, not an official website. Not an official website. Use at your own risk. Um, but yeah. Uh, this guy costs three. He has three attack power, three health. He has a sentinel keyword, which means basically it's like taunt. You have to attack him first before attacking other things. So basically I'm just kind of looking through my hand here, seeing if I have anything to play early, right? So this eight cost big badass blizzard assault AT, AT or AT, I think I can't see behind my stupid logo up there. But um, yeah, this big guy, I'm not playing in this anytime soon. I'm at most maybe getting a resource a turn, maybe two, uh, if I have certain cards in my deck. But, uh, or if I see certain cards. So yeah, do I mulligan this? Maybe. But I do have a card here I can play on the first turn. This first Legion Snowtrooper. He's a ground unit. I can play him for two. And uh, throw him out there. So I have something to play. I don't know the deck well enough to know. But yeah, I'll keep it, right? I'll keep it. But again, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing completely. I'm just talking high level, just trying to show people like I'm a noob with the game. And if I can figure this out, you can figure this out. It's very approachable. Okay. I'm just kind of giving you like a high level overview of some of the cool stuff in the game. So I'll keep it. I'll keep it as being recommended in the chat. Um, but this is, I'm just showing you like, this is one of the player decision points, right? Is like this cool decision. But if I choose the mulligan, I shuffle all this back in, I draw again, and I could draw a bunch of cards that cost four or five, six, and I have nothing to play first turn. That would be bad. Right? So. I'll keep it, and now I get to choose two cards to resource, okay? And like I said, this little version of this, this web app is fully playable in a browser. It's linked down below. Uh, it will literally prompt you for everything. It knows all the rules of all the cards, and the AI will kind of go through the motions and stuff. It's not the most competitive. Don't come in here trying to test your tournament decks out, um, but it is definitely a way to try the game or like just to see if your deck flows maybe. Um, you know, or goldfish some hands, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but at least it can go from the start of a game to an end of a game to just get some reps in and practice and see if you understand the rules. And you can kind of read up in the top left here, uh, in this little box here, you can kind of see um, what's going on. So you can follow along really slowly if you want to, um, which is kind of cool. So don't be intimidated if you never played like a card game like this before. Very approachable, very approachable. Um, so now we have to choose two cards to resource. These cards, we're going to put face down in a resource area to never be touched again, uh, played again, seen again. You can look at them to know what's there, but we can't, like, at this point, we can't take them and put them back into play. We can't draw them back in our hand. They're gone for the rest of the game, basically. So this eight cost card, I think I'm going to resource it. I'm not playing anytime soon. The game might not even last to that point, right? Uh, and I'm going to get rid of one of these lightsabers, I think. Because I don't, th I don't know, maybe, that's, maybe I keep that, put one on like a little guy. Hold one for Vader later, okay? And you're like, Vader later? Well, that rhymes. But also, the coolest thing in the game, okay, I've said that about a lot of things, but one of the coolest things in the game, your leader sits here as kind of like a passive little overlord that has an ability on it, okay? Let me just pop a cough candy in here. It has an ability on it that you may or may not get to use every round. This one on Vader is an action. I spend one resource, I exhaust Vader, which doesn't get to ready till the regroup phase. So it's like a once per round kind of thing. And if I played an, um, a villainy card with a black symbol, I'm allowed to deal one damage to a unit, any unit, even my own, uh, and one damage to a base. Okay. And if you see here, the bases have 30 health on them. Some of them have abilities. There's rare bases that have like 25 health and they have a special ability on them, which is kind of cool, which definitely opens up deck building space, which is very neat. Uh, and I can only imagine where it goes in the future when they do crazy stuff like this. Um, but yeah, they're keeping it simple in the starter set. But anyways, the leader, you see it has an epic action. Epic just means once per game, okay? So this action, if I control seven or more resources, I basically get to deploy my leader in play 
and they have a backside to them here. As a big unit, five attack, eight health, you know, force Imperial Sith key, uh, traits. And on attack, I can deal damage to a unit. You get big badass Darth Vader in play at some point in the game if you can make it to seven resources. You don't have to pay seven for him. You just have to have seven resources. So it makes kind of this big epic turn uh, where you can deploy your leader. It's fun. And you decide whether you want to deploy him that turn. You can wait another turn. You could, there's ways of trying to get him deployed earlier by trying to get resources faster, um, which is cool. On the other side, we have Luke. He's kind of the opposite. You want to pay a resource, exhaust him, and you can give a shield token, which kind of prevents all of one source of damage. It's like a little attachment and upgrade that protects them a little bit. Um, onto a heroism unit that you played that turn. And you see Luke here, his epic action, he actually comes out when you control six resources. And he's a 4-7 on attack. You can get, his whole thing is about giving shields out. He's all about defense. Here, you have a shield, you have a shield. Everyone gets a shield, okay? That's what he does. And Vader's over here going, I destroy your shield, I'll destroy your shield, you get a destroyed shield. He's just like pinging everybody all over the place. So it's kind of a nice little balance here, it's fun. Yeah, so I know, I love that I saw the saber, Kyle. I love that I saw it early. I'm kind of, I'm like, if I can just get that saber on Vader, that's what started me talking about the leader, was to say, if I can get to like basically round seven, or well, it'd be round six, because we start with two resources. If I can get there later and slap this Vader's lightsaber on there, I'm like living a thematic player's dream, like a Star Wars dream, and like we'll be smashing everyone with a lightsaber. Like, that's what hooked me right there. Like that moment is like one of the moments in the game where like you just, if you're a Star Wars fan, you just kind of get like pulled in. Uh, but yes, that is my goal. When I saw that, I'm, that's why I'm keeping one of them for sure. If I keep two, I'll put one on like a little guy, but it won't be as powerful, obviously. But if I put it on Vader, it does even more damage, which is so cool. Um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Again, if you're a pro at this game, this might not be the most interesting content. Go watch some other competitive videos. Again, I'm talking to the player who like doesn't know about this game or is like curious about this game or new to this game, just getting started like I am. Kind of follow my journey. Jacob or Jakob Bowers, thank you for becoming a Patreon to the channel, by the way. Thank you so much for the support. I don't know if it's Jacob or Jakob, um, but thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh... Yeah, could be round five, but I, like I didn't draw one of those little cards yet, so we'll see. Okay, so we both have resource two cards, okay? So there's my two cards face down. Those are resources, okay? I have a hand of four cards to start the game, okay? Turn one begins. Uh, randomly, player one begins, which is me. And on the left here, it shows your options. So like, again, you don't need to know like the full rules of the game or don't need to be a pro. It literally gives you the options on the bottom left of your screen here and graze out the options that you can't do. So it can kind of help you out. And again, watch the text box in the top left. If you're trying to understand what's going on in the game, you're not understanding what's happening. If you're not sure about a card, and you can always just hover over cards and kind of read them um, and check them out there. Okay, so my options are to play a card from my hand, okay? I can't play this card, it costs three. I only have two resources. Uh, I can't play this card, there's nothing to attach it to, again, my leader is here, but he's not a unit yet, so I can't attach it to him. He has to deploy later in the game with the epic action. Uh, or I can like play this guy. So I'm gonna play a card. I click play card, or I think you can hit C, uh, I think. There's like hotkeys and stuff. And it's asking me which card do you wanna play. Very cool, it highlights the one that you can play, so if you're not sure, um, it kinda like hand holds you a bit, which is nice. So it's like, oh, well obviously I can't play the cell block card, so no cheating. Um, and I'll click this guy, and it just throws him in play. And when they come into play, they come into play exhausted. In most cases, there is the ambush keyword that will allow you to come into play. And if there's a unit to attack in the same arena, you can ready an attack. So this is perfect. My opponent played a space unit. This allows me to highlight the two arenas, which is one of the things when I played at Gen Con, we're talking on the live stream, one of the coolest things about it. It's not just the... I have a row of units and I'm smashing your units and you're smashing my units until they're all dead. It is, do I deploy a unit in the ground? It actually goes all the way back to deck building. How many space units do I include? How many ground units do I include? And if you see in the top right of the card, um, if it's a ground unit, you, can, you can't really see it behind, here, let me remove this. Here. 
if it's a ground unit, like this guy, see in the top right of the card, you see ground in white. So it very much stands out. You can tell it's a unit. It says literally unit on the top left of the card. Okay. And then my opponent played a space unit, which you can see has black behind it. So very quickly at a glance on the table, you can kind of see if it's space or ground. Because there are some like, you know, kind of vehicles that go on the ground, some vehicles that go in space. If you're not a huge Star Wars fan, you might not know the difference. Um, but gameplay wise, it's right on the card. So basically, in units in the ground fight units in the ground. Or they can fight the base. Units in space can fight other units in space or the base. There are some exceptions to those rules, of course. But in general, that's how it is. So with the whole back and forth, I just deployed a ground unit. And my opponent's like, yeah, I just put a freaking X-Wing out. You can't deal with my space unit. And I'm like, well, you can't deal with my ground unit. So like we have this fun little back and forth, this little game within the game of where to kind of like, you, you, you got to cover two sides of the war. So you're like literally, you're not as zoomed in as like, you know, you're playing X-Wing, you know, and you're just ships fighting ships or you're playing like, I don't know, Star Wars Legion or whatever, right? And you're just miniatures fighting miniatures, you know, like on the ground, all ground battle. This is like trying to simulate there's a ground battle going on and there's a, a space battle going on at the same time. And you're kind of commanding it from the back, you know? And it's like, I got my base, you have your base, and we're kind of fighting together. It's, it's, it's neat how they did that. Um, so it's, it's very cool. I don't know if it works, but it seems fun. Uh, so yeah. So now my only option is to take initiative or pass. Well, I have the initiative right now. If I don't take it, my opponent could steal it from me. It just means I get to go first next round, which is very important in this game I'm learning. So I'll just take initiative. There's nothing else I can do. I can't, I can't do Vader's ability because uh, I don't have... Here, let me just turn off this up. Um, I don't have... I didn't have an extra resource to do Vader's ability. I did play a card with um, a villain aspect icon. But I, I didn't have a resource to, to try to deal damage, unfortunately. And now we're back to the regroup phase, where first things first, draw two cards. Now I look at my whole hand, not just the two cards I drew. I get to look at my whole hand and decide which card, if any, I want to resource. And they recommend in the rules that you should resource at least up until you get your leader out. So don't stop resourcing early. I'm sure there'll be some cases where you want to do that for some reason. Uh, it's Jacob, like Jacob's Ladder. I don't know what Jacob's Ladder is, but I'm assuming that's what you mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could be Jacob's Ladder? I don't know, but anyways. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome. Oh, Edward says, by the way, all original artwork in this game, which some people like, some people don't, uh, it's like a 90s comic book artwork, which I like because it, it, it's perfect for the 90s card game appeal that this is going for. This is why I say this game has like that 90s collectible card game feel to it. it, it aesthetically, gameplay wise, formats, approachability, all of it. All of it, it screams 90s card game, which is crazy, but... Um, Says it's all original artwork in the game, not like previously FFG card games, which uh, that recycled art from Armada, X Wing, Outer Rim, etc. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Can't think of a better reference. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm just messing with you. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so I drew two new cards. So I got an Imperial Interceptor, which I do like this card a lot because it comes into play. And when played, I can deal 3 damage to a space unit. Well, let me see how much health this space unit has over here. Oh, just so happens to have 3 damage. <laughs> or 3 health or whatever. 3 toughness, 3 shield. I don't know what those are called. Again, I'm not a pro at the game. I'm just showing you. You can dive deeper than me. Uh, I'm still new to it. I haven't played like my first real game yet, obviously. Um, but yeah. I don't know all the terms. Um, okay. So I'm definitely keeping that. That'll help me in space. This guy, look at this thing. Six cost. When played, give a unit sentinel for this phase. And they even put the rules text on some of the cards. Units in this arena can't attack your non-sentinel units or your base. I might keep that. I'm going to get rid of, I think, one of these cell block guards. 
Again, I don't know what I'm doing totally, but that's what I'm doing. If I lose the AI, I know I'm really bad, but we'll see. We have a plan. I have you guys to help me too. Uh, okay, so now uh, the round begins. So we have a new round. So you basically draw two cards, resource any one of them or not, then ready everything up, and then start a new round. And whoever has initiative goes first. That's it. This is it. So now our goal, just let's get his base down to zero, smash him around, run some ships into other ships, cut some people's heads off with lightsabers, you know, all the good stuff. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to attack, maybe? I don't think he can do anything to my unit here, because he's got nothing in play. He could ambush something in and kill my unit before I get to attack with it. So maybe I want to attack before that unit's in trouble. Or maybe I want to play something first, but maybe I don't want him to see what I'm going to play yet, you know, like hide some stuff. Maybe, if I could, I would love to play this, this uh, Imperial vehicle here, this Imperial Inceptor, and kill that X-Wing before it attacks my base, but I don't have enough to play, play it yet, so I gotta wait till next round. So, I know I'm probably just gonna play the Cell Block Guard. I might wait to see if he puts something out in the ground, because maybe I want to attack something. While attacking a damaged unit, this unit gets plus two, plus zero and gives over overwhelm overwhelm means like the extra damage that that's beyond killing an enemy will go to the base but they don't have a unit out that i can even attack that's damaged um so yeah what do i do what do i do i'm gonna just play a card i think i'll just put this guy out not exciting oh he's going crazy space look what he just did okay he played a wing leader that when played he gave two experience tokens which all those are basically little attachments that uh, you tuck under the card. It gives a plus one attack, plus one defense, basically, or plus one health um, twice. So this little X-Wing, or this Alliance X-Wing, which I don't know how to see what it is again. He just buffed its health up to five and its attack to four. What the hell, man? Uh, I'm a little worried. Okay, uh, I'm just going to attack here, I guess. So I'm going to attack the base with this unit. So I'm winning 30 to 28, but he's about to crush me here. So he just smashed my base for four. I am just going to take the initiative. I'm getting wrecked. <laughs> Nick, Nick Pickle says, glad you're highlighting this game. I was debating driving 30 minutes for a pre-release tomorrow. Do it. Do it. Do it. The cool part about the pre-release, which I didn't go into details on yet, I was going to go to it after we kind of showed how people can try the game first. Um, but the pre-release is, there's a box that comes with six packs in it. The store will probably charge you around basically retail for that box. It comes with six packs, comes with a deck box, some damage tokens to get you started. And you basically open the six packs, you build a sealed deck. There's some rules in the box that teach you how to play. There's some rules about the deck building and play. They should give you an hour to build a deck. And then you play a super casual, like three or four round little tournament. And some stores around me are giving out like packs for every win. Uh, some of them are, are raffling off accessories and stuff. Um, and some are charging extra for those prizes and some are not, which is so cool. Some really want to build a community and are worth spending a little money to make the money, you know. Some kind of like charge you for the prize support, you know, because they, they're the like short term thinking, you know, unfortunately. But, um, it's supposed to be super casual. Some people, it's gonna literally their first time looking at cards, reading the rules and all that. So it, it should be super fun. Um, but I'm gonna go uh, to a few. Uh, so I'll, yeah, I recommend it. Like, And here's the thing. If you would like to play a game like this and you're like, ah, I don't know, I think it's gonna fail. I'll wait and see. Here's the problem with that. You're getting like a chicken and egg kind of thing, right? If you don't go to your store and like spend money, build a community, play in games, buy packs, whatever, the store is only going to see so much demand for the game and then they might not stock it and they might not sell it and they might not promote it. Then there's no communities then there's no people buying it. Then the game doesn't grow and then Fantasy Flight doesn't make money and want to keep producing it and the game shrivels and dies, right? So like if you want this game to succeed and you want it to be an awesome game and you want FFG to do better with it, you're going to have to kind of put up a little money too, right? That's the idea. So you can try it out, very little entry by just getting a starter kit playing it at home, or playing this online for free, what I'm doing right now. I'm literally playing the starter kit, and I'm not spending any money. No money. And I don't have to play against somebody. I can just try it online, see if I even like it. Um, or you go to pre-release, you're basically buying six packs, 
and you get to open them, play with them, and take them home. And if you don't like it, and you think the game sucks, and the card quality sucks, or the art sucks, or whatever after that, and you didn't have fun, that's it. Sell the cards, give them away, whatever you want, and you're, you're out, right? Um, but it's a nice way to try it and have fun with people who are all coming in new to it too, right? So it's kind of fun. But yeah. Yeah, there, Edward, yeah, this game is like, what is it, what do you say? Like, easy to learn, hard to master kind of thing. There's like so many decision points, which that's what I look for in games, right? And it's only the first set. It's not going to be too crazy. Um, but there's a lot here. Okay, so we're going to choose a resource to uh, jam. Oh, man, look at Palpatine. I like should put him as a resource, but like it's Palpatine, man. I want to play him because he's awesome. But will I make it that far? I don't know. <laughs> Here's a card recruit. Search the top five cards of your deck for a unit, reveal it, draw it, put the other cards on the bottom of your deck. Do I do that to try to find? There's these cards in here called Super Laser Technicians, which I can put into play. They can die, and if they die, they become a resource, which helps get my leader out faster. Is that too slow? Should I like play this to try to find one? I don't know. That might be silly, right? I think I need to deal with space units this round. So this kind of stuff is not too slow. So I, I'm thinking of just putting this in there for now. Yeah, let's just do that. But I probably should have kept that and got rid of one of these more expensive ones. But like, I want to battle in the space. So I, I need to get these guys in there. Okay. So what are we doing here? Let's... Hmm. I probably should get rid of the unit that's hitting harder first, right? But I can't get rid of it with this three damage. It's it's still gonna be short one. Oh, I can finish it off with this if I do it right. Ah, but I only have four resources. Yeah, this is rough. Okay, I'll do what I can do though. I, I gotta do it. I just need one more resource then I can ping with Vader and finish this bastard off. Should I, I do this one first then? Mm, no, let's start this guy. We're playing the long game. Let's play the long game. Yeah, this jerk face, he's just gonna keep hitting my base. He doesn't even care about my unit. He's like, ha ha ha, I'll make you deal with me while I smash your base. Okay, Um. so I guess I'm gonna just attack his base then. I'll attack with this one first. Oh, now he plays a ground unit after I attack, you jerk. So C3PO, when played, slash on attack, choose a number. Choose a number, then look at the top card of the deck. If it's cost, is the chosen number, you may reveal it and draw it. Super silly starter deck card. Okay. <laughs> Definitely talking is getting my throat tickling. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Resupply is awesome, Vader. Brandon, how's it going? The uh, faster you get Vader out, the faster you win. I agree, I agree. But uh, I'm making some silly fun choices here on stream. It's good. Again, I'm not here for the, the best plays. That's not what we're doing today. Uh, but yeah, we'll take initiative, sure. And you just put a shield token on C-3PO. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, I know C-3PO, there's R2-D2, and they kind of go together, which is fun. Okay. I could look at his hand, but like again, I, I don't know how I can really react to that. Too much. When defeated, you may ready a villainy unit. Mm, I like. I should probably... Hmm. Yeah, let's throw the probe droid in. I don't know. Okay. Uh, hmm. Mm. Yeah, I probably should have kept that probe droid. I should have played that probe droid and Mahdi this turn. Uh, my bad. <laughs> I'm not thinking straight. All right, anyways, let's... Uh, 
how we do this. This guy's probably going to attack our base again, right? That's all he does. Four damage, four damage, four damage. We got to get him out of here. But he's only one away. So what I should do, I want to do Vader's ability to be efficient. So I should just play Mahdi. Right? So that I've uh, played a villainy card. Oh, Leia's in. Leia exhaust units. I don't like Leia. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do an action ability on my leader. So he didn't use the space unit, which is perfect. And I'm going to do the action on the card to deal one damage to a unit in the base. So we're going to finish off this... this uh... Oh no, I mapped it out wrong. I'm a dummy. It's five. He has five health. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. All right, anyways, uh, let's deal damage to the base. Yeah, I messed that up. I'm a, I'm a dummy. I lost this game already. Uh, but yeah, all right. If we can win this, though, holy crap. With all these misplays. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's... Um, can't play anything. Oh, I can play the lightsaber, but we're not going to do that, right? We're holding out. We shouldn't, but we, we're going to hold out. Uh... Yeah, so annoying. I should have just, I should have used Vader's ability to kill this guy and then just ran this guy into this guy. So annoying. Let's just do it. I gotta do it. I can't have this thing killing my base. Oh, misplays, misplays is killing me. But it's all good. Don't worry, no one's watching. I'm just playing against AI on the internet, right? No one's here watching. You can play, goof around. That's what the point I'm trying to make is. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not going to play anything. Attack, though. Look at all this junk. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to hit the base. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to do it. Probably took out Leia. I'm just going to pass. Man, I'm in trouble. I misplays, misplays, misplays. Ooh, I'm your father. Deal seven damage to an enemy unit unless its controller says no. If they do, draw three cards. Mm. Yeah, all I'm trying to do is play these silly cards. I should not have held these cards. I should have kept cheaper stuff. That was my play. I should have dug for a super laser guy. Okay, what are we doing? These aren't the plays you're looking for. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Do I need card draw, or is he, is he gonna let me deal seven damage to like three PO? Who knows, right? That's like overkill, right? I should probably just get rid of it. So I'm gonna have what six resources this turn, so I could play this big boy, but I can deal with this space unit with Vader's ability, so I don't necessarily need to play this big guy right now. I should just play this guy. But I can have six resources. So this will be two. Three for Vader's ability. And I could just play this for three. I don't think I'm going to lose right here. I feel like I can deal with them. So I probably should get rid of Palpatine, right? Sucks. Yeah, let's get rid of Palpatine. Uh, I tried. I tried to hold you as long as I could. I tried, but we're we're falling apart here. I made some bad choices. Please, Emperor, forgive me. Oh, time to review the Unicus rule. Uh, oh, Admiral Mahdi. Yes, correct. See, now I'm assuming he's going to die this turn, Edward. That's why I'm thinking, because I'm going to use him to try to ready a unit, right? Assuming this unit's not dead. So in my mind, Admiral Ra Mahdi should only be in play like for one round. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking I'll play him again, you know, but if it was like he was like a five cost unit that I'm expecting to stay around a lot and I had a duplicate come up, I would get rid of that duplicate. But Admiral Ramadi is more of a throwaway card, so he never really should stay in play too long anyway. But the uniqueness rule is the same as in any other game, except for um, the uniqueness rule takes into account even the subtitle. So this is Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. There is another Dark Vader unit card. I can play him and have him out in the field or in one of the arenas, uh, the ground arena in this case, um, with my leader also because they are both different Darth Vaders. They both have different subtitles. 
So I technically in the future could have Admiral, Admiral Mahdi something something, a different subtitle, and I could play them both in on in play at the same time. So it's a little weird. It's not the usual unique rules, but it's close. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting. Okay, um, so there we go. Let's do... I'm going to attack first. With this. I wish I had a damage unit already, but... Yo, you know what? Let's see what's happening here with this first. Let's do this. He's going to let me draw cards if I pick Luke, right? Luke's in play. I could deal 7 damage to Luke. He's not going to let me just kill Luke in one shot with a 3 cost card. So if I choose Luke, I'll get to draw 3 cards. But if I choose... Like C3PO, but he only hits for one. Like, I don't really care about him right now. Maybe this guy. If I choose this guy, he'll probably let it go through because seven damage is kind of overkill to get rid of a three cross unit. But this guy could literally be hitting my base for three, so that's kind of a big deal, right? I love these kind of decisions. It's so fun. Like, putting it in your opponent's hands. Um, but yeah, it's like, what would I do here? I want to kind of thin his board out. But also drawing cards would be nice too. I don't know. Oh. Yes, Ultra Violetta, that's why I said it's definitely 90s comic book vibe is the feel in this game with the art they did. 100%. 100 uh, percent Okay, so let's um uh, Yeah, let's just do this guy. Let's try to kill him. Yeah, he let he let the damage go through. I just need to kill something. Oh man. Okay, okay. All right. So I've played a card. It had a black icon. I technically can now do Vader's ability. Uh, I can make this guy attack for four against Luke. Um... Okay, I'm going to deal one damage to a unit. Now, I could just get rid of this wing leader. But it only hits for two. I'm trying to think more big picture. But if I damage Luke, this unit will get an extra two attacking. Yeah, he'll die. But I think that's the way to go. Or I just let Luke... I don't know. Oh, yeah, because I can line up this lightsaber to finish Luke off, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're thinking, like, we hopefully can survive the round. That's literally all I'm trying to do. Um, and prepare for Luke's death. Okay, so, uh, deal one damage to Luke, I think. Because, like, I don't want his leader in play. Like, the leader's in play, we got to get rid of Luke, like, right? That's, like, obviously he's the biggest threat. Okay, and I'll deal one damage to the base. Okay, we're, we're not too far off, but I'm just worried about this board here. Oh no, what's he doing? Surprise strike. Ah, bastard. So I was pl along playing. I wanted to attack with this guy and then ready him up with Mahdi. But he killed him before I could do that. <laughs> so the AI is not as stupid as I was thinking. But he did a surprise strike, which increased this guy's... I think it like increased his attack. It says it all up here or whatever, but... Surprise strike. Attack with unit gets plus three, plus zero. For the attack. So he just beefed that guy up. I don't know why. Admiral Mahdi's like one health, right? I don't know why he did that. So maybe the AI is kind of dumb, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now... Uh, yeah, I'll just ready this unit. Sure. That sucks. I didn't get to do the ready thing. But... I can still play another Mahdi, because see, he's out of play, so we're good. But I'll attack with this guy first, I think. And I'm going to attack into Luke. Another surprise strike? What the hell, man? Yeah, I'm going to like lose the game right here. Hmm, very bad plays, very bad plays. Uh, yep. He's probably just going to kill this guy, but I'll throw him in. 
I just try and distract him from my base. Please don't kill my base. It's gonna do four with Luke. Hopefully that's oh yeah, that's all he can do. He has all his resources spent, right? So he's probably gonna attack my base with Luke. I'll just take initiative, I guess. Oh, hello. Hello. Give a friendly unit plus two plus two for this phase. Then it deals damage equal to its power divided among uh, divided as you choose, sorry, among any number of units. Mm -hmm. So we're at what? One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to play something in there. It's going to be this. It's going to be this. Probably shouldn't be. I probably need ground units more than space. No, it's got to be this, I think. Yeah, it's got to be this. I held those cards for so long and they're like useless. But it's like this is part of the game, right? It's so fun. Yeah, we're getting Vader out now, right? I think this turn, seven. So I need to put a resource in. I Like I don't want to, but I need to, right? <laughs> okay. All right, we have initiative. Take it slow, take it slow. All right. Um, do we get Vader out? The cool part is we could use Vader's action before deploying him even. So you can exhaust him, do his action to deal a damage, deal a damage. And still deploy him after, and he comes into play ready, which is so cool. Um, but if I literally don't deal with this stuff fast, uh, they're just going to kill my base for seven and I lose. So, like, I have to be so quick here. Uh, so, I don't know what to do. Probably deploy Vader and slap this lightsaber on him, right? I probably still lose, though. Oh, overwhelming barrage on Vader. But I, I want to do it after putting the lightsaber on him. But I think that's getting too greedy, right? No, Jackpot Man, the game is, was basically finished back then. Um, when I played it at Gen Con, they were already like finished, like I think like the first few sets. Um, so we were playing with final cards, final rules, everything. Um, which is crazy. They're already working on set 9, like end of year 3 products. They're already like way ahead. They have like a 5 year plan for the game. Um, so yeah, it's no different other than the starter deck has 50 cards in it. The demo decks we were playing with at Gen Con were like 30 card decks, but they still had a lot of the same cards in them that the starter decks have. Um, so yeah. So I came back to check out the game like a month ago and I was like, oh yeah, it's still like the same game. They just spoiled more cards and spoiled more formats. Pre-release this weekend. Launch is a week and a couple days from now. Um, like March 8th or something. So yeah, it's all, I'm getting excited. Like I started getting back into it, started researching it, playing around online here. And yeah, I, I pre-ordered a couple of starter sets. I pre-ordered a couple of boxes of packs. Uh, Mel and I are going to three pre-releases this weekend. Um, I'm hoping some of my stores pick up weekly play. So I can just, I basically just want to get back to playing casually week to week, a card game at a local game store. That's all I really want. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get back into like card games again. Uh, okay. So I think we have to get Vader out, right? Maybe I, my opponent will get scared and attack Vader too. Or I could do the overwhelming barrage first, but it's like such a bad play because uh, I would only get three on him to deal out. But that three could be enough to finish Luke and kill this like, oh no, can't kill the X-Wing. has a shield on it now. Yeah, you put a token upgrade shield on here. All right. I think we get Vader in play. That's our only chance. Deploy my leader. Epic action. Vader's in play. You better run now, you fools. Oh, yeah, Luke, Luke attacking my base. He knows Luke's about to die. Oh, I'm screwed. Because then now all he has to do is attack three on my base next action and I'm dead. So I have to kill this three cost unit or this three attack unit. And I can't. He's seven health, right? Oh, this is so bad. I could do it with this. But that's not the play I want to make. Oh my god. Yeah, but I have to do it, I think. Yeah, I made so many mistakes. So many mistakes. I have to do it. 
So I gave Vader plus two plus two, and now I can do up to seven damage to a unit. I'm going to do it all to this guy. All seven, please. Instead of like, you know, finishing a whole bunch of units off, I have to, I have to kill this guy because he can kill my base right now. That sucks. Stop it, man. Oh, he killed Mahdi? Oh, man, this bastard. I can't even ready up Vader again. <laughs> what are you doing? This AI is so troll. <laughs> oh, wow. He still can kill my base with Leia and this wing leader. But let me show you. I am now going to... Problem is this shields here. Okay, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna lose still, but I'll show you here. I'm gonna play this lightsaber on Vader because now I've achieved the achievement I wanted to do. Win or lose, we did it. And that that because I played it on Vader. Um, I I don't know how to highlight it. Uh, right there. When played, if attached unit starts Vader, you may deal four damage to a ground unit. We're gonna finish off Leia, I think, because we don't want her attacking our base right now. What is this? Okay, you can't attack because there's no unit in space to ambush. But yeah, I definitely have lost because I can't deal with these space units, I don't think. Okay, now I'm going to attack with Vader. Now Vader says on attack, I could deal two damage to a unit. It doesn't say ground unit, so I can even hit space. But the problem is they have shields on here, which is not going to help. So I'll just attack. I'll hit two damage on Luke. Get rid of him. Oh no, I'm a, I don't want to attack him. Oh crap. I misclicked there. I wanted to just damage Luke, uh, not attack Luke. So I messed up. I lost. It's fine. But yeah, I just wanted to hit Luke for two damage. Yeah, but it was like a wasted attack. Yeah, that, I screwed up there. But that's my bad. You get the point. I can make mistakes on here. I'm not at a tournament. I'm not at a store. I'm not playing against someone online. Just AI. So you can goof around, learn the game, make mistakes. That's my excuse. Take initiative, and unfortunately, he's going to just kill my base right here. Oh no, he's one shy. Yeah, I didn't get like a, I need a sentinel like space unit or something. Uh, let's just not resource anything. And then we will, yeah, I don't even know what to do, guys. Uh, let's just attack with Vader one more time. Attack with Vader, two damage. Kill C-3PO. Why not? Let's be evil. And then... Oh! No, I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. Yeah, I messed up. But anyways, you get the point. I won't do that in, in person, but, you know, in here I'm not clicking correctly. But again, I, I am not too familiar with this. I don't play too much on here, but... So we could restart the game, or we can load new decks, uh, which is so cool. You could just reset it right back up. Or you can go back... And like I said, you can import decks. Um, you can build decks on here. And you can you can create your own decks and try them out, which is so cool. And just play against AI, right? If you're like you're a little intimidated and want to play against people yet, you know. Uh, a great free resource. And if you uh they have a Kickstarter, or not a Kickstarter, sorry, a Patreon linked all over here. Um, but on this website, you can play all these games against AI and just try them out. Um, but if you back them on, on Patreon, you get access to playing uh, like a, a sealed against the AI where you crack six packs or you can play draft. Um, and yeah. So in here, uh, behind my head, I can click pre-release and it follows the pre-release rules kind of and it allows me to have Luke and Vader in my pre-release pool. Of leaders to build with so even if you were like a worried about going to a pre-release this weekend you could come on here it's like i think it was like five dollars uh, a month on patreon uh and if you're a patreon to me you know how that works um and yeah so i did this and i was playing with mel the other day and we were just trying it out cracking packs i don't know how accurate the pack distribution is but it supposedly simulates it pretty well because they obviously don't know 100 percent what the exact rarities are and stuff you know this the secret sauce 
Um, but FFG has been pretty open about it, but not like precise to the numbers, you know. Um, but yeah, you could just open six packs. And you can literally go through a sealed, and then you get to play a few games against the AI and try it out. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Does deal damage care about shields? Yeah, so Yogi, shields in this game is literally prote protects against like the next source of damage. So like in Gloomhaven, you know, the way like the Brittle or whatever doubles the source of damage then goes away. It's kind of like that. It protects against the next source of damage then goes away. Uh, or I guess that'd be more like Ward, right? Kind of. So you can stack shields up. If I have five shields on a unit, that unit literally needs to be hit for five totally separate sources of damage. So if I attacked it for seven damage in one attack, that's only one shield gone. If I then attack it for one, that's a second shield gone. So like, it doesn't matter the value, it's each separate instance. So Vader actually does a separate deal damage. That could break one shield off, and then he can attack again and break another shield off. Obviously, you don't really want to do that with him, because you're kind of wasting his big damage. But um, that's, that's how that works. So shields are very annoying, um, but it, it makes sense, right? Pack one, pick the base. So how it works in the pre-release events, uh, you'll open six packs, you sort your cards, you then can pick a leader. Now you can pick a leader out of one of the packs that you open, but also in the pre-release kit, you get a promo like Luke and Vader, which are similar to the Gen Con promos, except for their alternate art and their foil. Um, these are not foil, the Gen Con promos I got. But everyone's going to have a copy of Luke and Vader in their pre-release kit. So to help people new to the game have more deck building options to make things smoother, you will always have Luke and Vader's colors to build from if you want. And even if you don't open the base color you need, let's say I want to use a red base and I didn't open a red base, the store has a pack of bases that they have tons of extras that they can provide you. Um, so they've made it so this first pre-release... This first sealed event is very new player friendly. Um, but basically you open packs and in every pack there's like, I think it's 15 car 16 cards. You can see them here, 16. You always get a leader and they make sure there's a leader in there to make these packs are fully designed to be drafted and for sealed play. Fully in mind, that's why they put so many cards in there. You always get a leader, you always get a base, okay? So in draft, you're only drafting from three packs and then you still build a 30 card deck. And you, you draft your leaders first. So you literally open your three packs, pull out the leaders, and then all three leaders are passed around the table and drafted until you get your three leaders. Then you start drafting pack by pack. But in the packs, they have like, I think it's nine commons, three uncommon slots, a rare slash legendary slot, and a foil slot. The last card is always a foil. We'll open some packs on stream in the future. And I'll kind of show that to you if you don't go to a pre-release. Um, but the packs are all the same. The packs in the pre-release, packs in the boosters, packs um, that you just buy one off or whatever. It's just they're all they have the same distribution. Um, and in the packs, they have like different treatments that you can't really see them on here. Um, but the best way I can show you. For those who like collecting stuff. Uh, hold on one sec. It's probably on here somewhere, right? Uh, set details. So yeah, there's the pre-release kit. There's the starter set that comes out in a week. Pre-releases are this weekend and next weekend and throughout the week. They happen like one-ish week before release. And then there's booster packs. I'm not located in the USA, no. Where the hell is... There's, there's like uh, something I saw that was like explain the, the cool like... Um, um, collect? Maybe in the cart... Edward, there was an article, right, that explained, like, um, the different, like, the foils and the hyperspaces and stuff, right? Maybe in the news? Um, 
I remember like I looked at it like months and months ago. Um uh, if you want to read about the different factions, like the different colors, um the tournament scene that's going to be happening eventually. It's all here. It's got to be in here. Oh, here's the booster packs. So 16 cards. Yeah, here, here's a good picture of it. So they have like the regular cards that you've been seeing me play with. They have like a normal border and stuff. They look like every other card game's cards, you know, with a black border. And then they have these things called hyperspace. And this is like what adds to the supposedly the fun of opening packs and collecting unique cards. So in card games I played before, like LCGs, right? I would have to go to like tournaments or casual local organized play to be able to get alternate art versions of cards or full bleed or you know borderless cards whatever you want to call them extended art full art whatever but they're going to include them in every i think in every pack or every other pack you have a chance of getting a hyperspace which is basically just this extended art with the lines on the side so that's called hyperspace and then the leaders have like a showcase variant, which is kind of like Enchanteds from Lorcana, except for they're only one in every 12 boxes. Lorcanas were like one in every box and a half. Um, so they're way more rare. They're foil, they're alternate art, full art. So these are kind of like the collector chase cards and stuff to kind of like make people excited to open packs. Um, so there's hyperspace, that's just the stretch border. There's Hyperspace, uh, Rare, and Legendary. So that's like one in 15 packs, two in every three. Um, legendary cards are one in every eight. Um, and then there's like the Foil Hyperspace Rare is one in every 50. The Showcase, oh, it's one in every 12 boxes. I don't know if that's what I said. Foil card, you get a Foil card in every pack, but it could be Hyperspace, could not be Hyperspace, could be Rare, Common, Uncommon, Legendary. Um, even in your common cards your first nine cards one of them could be a hyperspace then in your uncommons one of them could be hyperspace and could also possibly be replaced by a hyperspace legendary or rare and then your rare pack or your rare slot could have a legendary in it or some variant of it or something and then the last card could be a foil it's always a foil but it could be hyperspace or could be not or could be Common, uncommon, rare, legendary. For those who care about that stuff, which I don't really, um, it's kind of neat. For me, if I open rare cards, I can sell those to help me buy more playable copies of cheaper cards. But one thing I like that they said for this game, which Danny said on a stream, I don't know word for word, but basically the cards in this game, the commons and uncommons, are more of the playable cards. They're more of the cards you need in the game. Um, and unlike Flesh and Blood, which had cards that like if you're going to play at a high level tournament you need to spend hundreds of dollars on and decks cost thousands of dollars i don't know if it's going to be like that in this game because a collectible card all that is collectible about it is all visual and aesthetic nothing about it is gameplay different so there is no advantage to buying the set early to get some super powerful gameplay card that nobody can get who buys a cheap release later or something you know like in flesh and blood they had like they would release the game in like a higher cost expensive collector version but then would have tournaments that like if you didn't buy that version you wouldn't have those expensive cards that needed to be played at those tournaments it's very kind of weird it's like felt very scummy um but i understand you need collectors to kind of like and a secondary market to help fuel the game and entice stores to make money off it and carry it um but again i'm just coming at this from a game player's perspective but for those who are care about like how the collectability is or why people are excited to buy packs and all that stuff, um, FFG's definitely thought about that. Um, and it's there. So yeah. But the, the packs are built to be very playable. Like I like that they thought of it um, for draft and sealed. So like you can just grab three packs and a few friends each have three packs and for 15 ish dollars and then play a whole draft little tournament together and stuff, which is kind of cool. And they all work no matter which packs you buy. You don't have to buy special draft packs. Um, the packs work no matter what. They're all the same. It's very simple, very approachable, very... They thought it all through, which is very cool. Oh, the tournament rules have been released? <laughs> Edward, live news coming in. Uh...
Comprehensive rules are here. Don't see tournament rules, but they just released these like a couple days ago, right? Comprehensive rules. But yeah. Yeah, you can look at the foils here in the card database too, I think. Or at least the different uh, formats. So let's say we want to see this Death Trooper. And they'll show you the variants here. So there's the Hyperspace versus the original. I guess you can't see foil on here maybe. Yeah, that'd be hard to do, right? On a website. Uh, maybe we could see the Showcase. Oh, that's the one I have. Uh, I'm probably looking at the wrong. Oh, there you go. So here's, these are the 1 in 12 boxes. These are the crazy ones, right? So you get this leader. You get a leader in every pack. Some leaders are rare. Cassie and Andor. Andor is awesome, by the way. The TV show. Good stuff. I finally watched it. Awesome. Um, but he's a rare leader. So in Draft and Sealed, you won't see him very often. Um, but you could get a leader in every pack. But the crazy part is that leader could be a showcase. It could also be just a hyperspace, so not foil, just extended art the same. But the showcase, basically like the enchanted, the super rarest of rare cards, are these leaders coming in alternate art. They're full bleed and also foil. They're always foil, if that matters. Um, so which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, how do I click? So, for example, Boba Fett, we all know he's awesome. Uh, boom. I don't know how to see the other side, though. Oh, right here. Boom. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Have I tricked you into playing the game yet? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, that's all I got. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm just excited. That's all. I just want to share the game for those that maybe haven't been paying attention or who didn't know about it, maybe missed that Gen Con last year. Uh, but the game didn't fall apart. It didn't disappear. FFG's had a, like a plan that's been years in the making. I loved what I played at Gen Con last year. I put it on my radar. I already, just playing the demo at Gen Con, I knew I would like it more than Lorcana. Lorcana is fun, but like Lorcana is a cool thing to play with my little niece who loves Disney. But it's not something I want to go to tournaments and play. Um, Star Wars is more my thing. Uh, it seems a little bit more of like a mature game, if that makes sense. Which totally should be that way. Um, I'm not saying I want Lorcana to be like a more advanced game. I'm sure it will get there. But but yeah, I was already interested in this. So I pre-ordered some stuff. I'm going to a pre couple pre-releases this weekend with Mel. So I won't be streaming this weekend, FYI. I'll try to get some video and stuff. And maybe I can uh, like make a video when I get back of like the packs I got. I can talk about my experience or something. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Or do a stream or something. But uh, yeah. And I got the starter decks ordered from two different stores. I'm hoping to convince a couple of my local game stores, at least one, to do weekly local play. Uh, like local weekly play, whether it's, you know, one week we're doing draft, the next week we're doing sealed. Um, but supposedly they're gonna do uh, after launch. They have what's called the first season, which is like eight weeks. They have little store kits your store can buy. And you can show up weekly. And if you keep showing up each week, you have like a little card, like a, you know, kind of a punch card or something. Um, and they give you like a little booster pack with three cards in it that are like alternate art cards that are only like they're exclusive to showing up to weekly play. And it's meant to be super casual. It's just a way to get people in the store and playing together and building communities. After those eight weeks, there'll be something called store showdowns, which are like half casual, half competitive little tournaments that people can bring their decks they built with all the cards they've been, you know, buying or playing with through drafts and seals and all their packs they've been opening. And you can show up to a store showdown, you play for prizes and stuff. It's really chill. It's supposed to be chill. I don't know if it will be chill, um, but the intention is to be chill and super casual. The actual competitive hardcore stuff, I don't think starts till later in the year with like set two or three. Um, but the first set is meant to be casual, very new player friendly. Um, so you could probably call up your local store if you want to try the demo. Some of them have a demo set. Some stores actually will have a starter pack that they'll just open and demo the game with people that you could try with a friend even. 
Or again, try Force Table. Check out the link in the video description. Totally free. You can just play online against the AI. Send it to your friend. They can try it, whatever. You just can't play against your friend on there. You would have to use like Tabletop Simulator or something. Um, and I don't think that's free. I don't think. But uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to actually going in person and playing in a store and like playing with physical cards again. I've missed that since before COVID with Keyforge and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, that's all. So hopefully that gives like a nice high level view of the game, how you can try it and uh, bring some light on the pre-releases happening and the launch happening soon. I'm just excited to get into it. I know it's not for everybody. You don't have to do it. I'm not telling you you should play this or you're a loser or anything like that. I know CCGs are not for everybody. Uh, this is only my second technically, maybe my third CCG I've technically played or will play. Because Keyforge, yes, is a collectible card game, but there was like no deck building. But still, I spent lots of money and chased packs and chased decks and stuff. Played limited formats and stuff. Um, but Flesh and Blood I played, but again, I only played starter decks, only played casually. I didn't go crazy with it, didn't chase cards down, didn't play in tournaments. So this is like my first collectible card game that could get expensive, but I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to just see how the casual works. I'm going to try some sealed, try some draft. Um, and see where it goes from there. See where it goes from there. Maybe at Gen Con, I'll play in some events. Some casual events would be fun. Maybe I could play some drafts with you guys. It'd be fun. Um, but we'll see. But again, maybe maybe the game, um, I just don't have fun. Maybe my local community is full of dirt bags and I don't want to play. And maybe that happens. Maybe no stores support it around me and it just dies. If that happens, I don't lose sleep. I just move on to other games. It's all good. There's so many great games to play. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> But I hope it's it's fun, and I hope it works out. And Because uh, I do like card games and stuff, and games that FFG makes. They've been pretty good at making some fun stuff. So hopefully this is another winner. Yogi says, the only store near me with a pre-release event looks like someone's house. Again, Yogi... <laughs> Sorry, I was saying earlier, not every store has inputted their stuff in the locator. So this website uh, where you're looking up pre-releases and purchasing product, I would look for stores that you can purchase product at and then contact them. Because I feel like Asmodee has put every store in this database who has bought product from the distributors, but it's up to the store to actually input their events. And I 100% know of at least 10 stores that are within driving distance for me that did not put their info in here for their various pre-releases. I know some stores that are doing like five pre-releases over the same weekend and they've put zero of them in this website, which like pisses me off so much. So what I recommend is go to your store's Facebook pages, go to their websites, email them, call them, visit them and tell them you want to play this game. Maybe they already have a pre-release scheduled. Maybe they already have demo decks that you can try. Maybe they already are planning stuff. Maybe they weren't sure and you're the first person to bring it to their attention. Tell them you're interested. Pre-order a starter deck from them. Maybe they'll start hosting weekly events. Maybe they'll order some boxes. I don't know. Maybe they'll put packs on their front counter. I don't know. But it's going to take work from you because the problem is FFG and Asmodee are not the best at organized play. I've learned this. It's up to the players to kind of get the fuel started. Because remember, some stores have been kind of not happy with FFG over the years and Asmodee on how they support OP. Asmodee is trying to get better at it. But is the best communities are always built by the players who who like do the legwork, run it, let the store know you're interested in. It's a mix between the stores doing the work and the players doing the work and coming together. And you know, FFG and Asmodee like to feel like they're doing a lot there, but they're not really. Like they still suck at it. Um, and they got to prove me wrong here, hopefully. But um, it's going to take you telling your store you're interested because right now there's like Magic, Pokemon. Yu-Gi-Oh, Lorcana, One Piece, a thousand other collectible games, a thousand board games, tabletop war games, RPGs. There is so much stuff your hobby store can carry. They do not have the capacity sometimes to pay attention to all the things that are out there. So if you're interested in this kind of game, whatever game it is, go there and tell your damn store, pre-order some stuff. Um, that's the only way you're going to build a community if it, if it doesn't have one. And start showing up weekly, start setting up events, work with your store, you know? Um, but yeah, don't trust this website. It's garbage. Uh, they're trying, they're going to improve it. 
But the fact that stores are not being like forced to enter their information on here for events is kind of kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. Um, but again, just go in here, Yogi, and search for like, you know, um, I don't know. So maybe like, you know, I'm just, for example, Sydney, Australia. Okay. Let's see if there's any stores that, um, of course, got to do kilometers, of course. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to put 100 kilometers. I don't know. Uh, so all these stores, I believe, are automatically entered in here because they've ordered from Asmodee or their distributors. So the store can't screw this up because Asmodee is putting this numbers, these numbers in. These are basically stores that have bought something and have some kind of product in their store already probably. So what I would do is email these stores, call these stores and say, hey, are you going to do a pre-release? Hey, are you going to have a weekly events? Hey, are you going to do any tournaments? Hey, are you going to do any draft events at your store? Like, do you have people that are already coming to play? Can I buy stuff from you? Whatever, okay? Do it this way. Don't trust the event tab. Because I bet if I do events and I search the same area, okay, actually, <laughs> there are a bunch of events. Okay, there are a lot of events. So maybe maybe stores are finally doing it, but there's way less stores here, and I bet there's missing events for sure. Oh, some stores are already putting in weekly play. That's great. That is great. Look at weekly play. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, but yeah, you can search for just weekly play, store showdowns, pre-release events. Eventually, they're going to have more serious things, but yeah, if you're just looking for pre-releases, um, tomorrow, there's a pre-release at Chromatic Games. Anyone in uh, um, near Liverpool Road in NSW, Australia? I don't know. Oh, you need to move to Sydney? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just did that for example. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know the uh, landscape of Australia very well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, look at pre-release event, pre-release event. Oh, there's even some late ones. Look at this. That's a late one, right? Look at this one. Go until rock until midnight. Yeah. Everyone should check out from the deep games. They go late. Till midnight, yeah. 60 bucks, what is going on there? There you go, it's Star Wars Unlimited After Dark, yeah. <laughs> Put the kids to bed. <laughs> oh, that's where you're joking, you should go to the airport. Ah, okay, okay. But again, call your local stores, Yogi, if you have any that are close to you. They, they might get you a pre-release kit. Even and not run a pre-release, maybe they'll just sell you a kit or something, you know, or sell you a starter deck or something to play around with. Get my deck box and get a cheap flight. Oh, there are stores. They're all MTG. Yeah, but the, okay. So search, search them in here, Yogi. Search them in here. Um, just on purchasing product, like obviously, don't tell me where you are or anything, but you know what I mean, like. Um, just search it in here see if any of them come up as if they come up in here They might have already started ordering product and then call them and say are you doing anything, right? You know, I don't know Oh NSW is New South Wales not North Southwest <laughs> That's where my mind went right away, but I knew it wasn't right so I didn't say it <laughs> New South Wales. Oh, okay. Learn something new every day. I love it. Does it have Denmark? I don't know. Let's check. Again, this website is linked in the video description. Just go to StarWarsLimited.com and hit the store and event locator in the top. Uh, Denmark? Oops. Why did it... I don't know if this, I'm doing this right. I don't get out much, remember, so, uh, yeah. Next Level Games uh, is selling product. They have, they've ordered product already. So has Spiel for Stinigen. Uh, Epic Panda Arhus. Are you just trying to get me to pronounce stuff that I can't pronounce? Okay, hold on. 
Can we? I don't know what is considered too far. Again, I'm not familiar with your transit system or your means of transportation. But in 50, within 50 kilometers, uh, Jackpot Man, there's one store that's, that's stalking the game. But they might have an event, but they might not have put it in. Yeah, see, there's no events that close to you, for example. Oh, pre-release, sorry. Hold on, let me do all events, because maybe they have weekly, right? No, see, none. So you need to call that store. This store, for sure, has ordered product. Contact them and say, like, have any players been interested? Can I buy a starter deck? Can I get weekly play going? Are you going to support the game? What are you doing? Are you just selling packs? Like, just let them know you're interested, right? And then maybe other players will show up. Maybe make a Facebook group online or go in a Facebook group, you know? And let them know about this store and maybe you can build a little community, you know? It doesn't take much work sometimes. <laughs> That's cool. You mean there's more to Australia than Sydney? No, there's not. <clears throat> there's not. I know there's drop bears. And I think those are everywhere. I think those are everywhere. Especially by the airports. So you can't go there. That's what I've heard. Alright. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there you go. Star Wars Unlimited. I don't know. That's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. So basically what you've learned today is what the game is. How you can check it out in many different ways. Some that are free. Um, and also that I stink at the game. I'm a noob, just like you might be. So don't be afraid. There's other noobs that are going to be playing this game this weekend in pre-release. There's other noobs that are going to be buying games, playing on their living room table with a two-player starter set, which comes out in a week and a bit. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Drop Bears cleared the rest of the population out. We either live in cement bunkers or Sydney to hide from the Drop Bears. Yeah, totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. I picture like Fallout. You're living in the like you know the little uh, the little vaults. You know, whole civilization underground because of the drop bears. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's it. I don't know. That's it. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, that's all I got for you. So I'm gonna rest up and hopefully hit some pre-releases starting tomorrow. Um, I'm actually driving to like a few different places. Um, there was a pre-release actually. My daughter's going to, to stay at her aunt's and uncle's this weekend. And it's funny, I checked where they live and there's a pre-release like right near them. So we're going to drive her, you know, a couple hours away and drop her off and then go hit a pre-release in, a, you know, their, basically their town. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Then the next day, I'm, you know, driving a, another hour to another place to play. Um, I might even be going to one locally. They were too late in booking it. So I don't know if like it'll overlap or not, but I might play in my local store, which they were just slow to get it, get product. They literally only got product like today, uh, but we'll see. I'll definitely try to see if I can get weekly going there. We'll see. But anyways, yeah, Edward, no problem, man. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully it's helped you in some way, either if this game's for you or not for you. That's basically all I'm trying to do um, and make people aware of it or run away from it if they're scared of the uh, LC or the TCG model. But yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks again to these people, these people for supporting the channel. Much appreciated. If you'd like to become a member, click the join button. Uh, hit the like button. Thanks to all 40 of you who've clicked the like button already. Much appreciated. Um, if you're interested in this game, stay tuned. Uh, like I said, I do have the starter set coming. So we're going to play with some physical cards on stream. I'm going to try to get that set up. Uh, I'll be busting open some booster boxes for fun. Because why not? Maybe Mel and I will try like a little sealed. Maybe I'll try some Twin Sons with Kyle. I don't know. We'll see how far it goes. I definitely want to show Kyle the game. Maybe I'll do that on stream for fun. I'm sure that'll be frustrating for you guys. Um, but yeah. And then maybe I'll make a video or something about my travels with the pre-release. Or maybe a stream discussing my experience on the weekend. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in just some casual kind of Star Wars Unlimited stuff, stick around. Um, but yeah, we'll see how far it goes. We'll see how far it goes. Yeah. Anyways. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.